How many of you have bought a newsletter in the past year or a magazine or you were somewhere and you heard a hot tip from somebody and you went and literally bought that stock hook, line, and sinker without reading any chart or anything. You just bought as many shares as you had money to and you either haven't seen a gain or you saw a small gain in your money but it's flattened out since then. There's a reason for that and there's a reason that that, that literally explains all that very simply if you listen to me. And it's not your fault. You, you've been inundated with this idea. And I, my hope with the stock market CEO and the Rob is to break you from that habit, right? <sighs> that hot tips are the way that people get wealthy. That um, buying one company that just blows up is the game. And it's not. And not only is that not the way the stock market works, but the stock market doesn't run uh, the same way in January and February as it does right now when I'm recording this in July as it does in October. And that is the reason that your gains are going up and down, they're fluctuating or they're flatlined right now versus what they were when you bought. If you don't understand that, though, it can be very frustrating. And all you have to do is have a basic understanding of chart reading, learn a couple of w things about chart technique, and go back and research or just listen to my show and see that the stock market has a calendar way of moving. It's cyclical. Economic cycles move it, and economic cycles move in decade-type movements. They have, you know, year one, year two, it's different than year three and four or in a year that ends in a certain way right now. And so we have to invest in that way. Same thing with the months, right? The stock market moves differently. Going into October all the way through February because of the big money that puts to work their money there and because of the way mutual funds have to invest and so let's just talk about this calendar for a minute so you can understand that the way that you operate in the market really needs to be more about this calendar and the trends than anything. See, you, you get these hot tips and you think, okay, I'm just going to go and buy it because that's what they say. They say, buy now up into a certain price and then keep it. And that does work but it's not the most optimum way to invest. And it's certainly, in my opinion, not the way to get ridiculously wealthy in the stock market. And I don't know about you, but I got into the stock market with the idea that I wanted more time, more money, more freedom. I wanted to make money. And that's what we're here to talk about. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy. Okay? And if you have a problem with that, it's probably a mental hang-up. And that's for another conversation. So the stock market calendar... This thing blew my mind, and it's not invented by me, and I don't even know that you can say you invent it. It's just you do enough research and you see there's patterns. The best five months in the stock market are October, November, December, January, February. Boom. And if all you ever did was find a solid company to buy in October and hold until February, then sell and put your money in cash until the next October rolls around, you would do better than the majority of investment professionals. Really. Weird, huh? It, it is. Um, in my opinion, it's mind-blowing. The same thing with uh, breaking those months down, right? October is different than February. Why? Because in October, all mutual funds have to sell their losses and get them off their books. And in doing that, if the mutual fund manager is not skilled in knowing how to run money, they can cause a stock market decline that turns into a stock market, um, not just a pullback, but a real massive decline, collapse type thing that can turn into a panic real quick because you're talking about mutual funds that have over a trillion dollars in assets. Mutual funds are a big money-making scheme. And they're not just selling one company. They're selling every company that they don't think is doing well. And most of the time, that's everything less than their top 10 holdings. And we'll talk about that later. So October can be a time 
where you can actually find great buys because when that decline happens, it sets up a period of buying into fear, right? Keep moving forward. December, it can have a Santa Claus effect on the market. Uh, January and February, usually a great time in the market just because it is. You don't have to know why. It just is. Enjoy it. A lot of declines happen in February, about mid-February into March. For some reason, you go back, 2020, that massive decline in the market during COVID. When did that happen? It happened, a lot of people said it happened because of, uh, because we went into a shutdown. It happened because of economic dis- dis- blah, blah, blah. No, it happened because it was set up to happen and you could have profited from it. You could have also set yourself up to guard yourself against losses in your mutual funds and long-term investments if you knew how to read the charts. So see, stock market moves in trends. Summertime, we'll say about May into August, is a really volatile time in the stock market. Usually, a lot of big money takes vacations during the summertime, and they take their money with them when they go. So you don't have the big movements in one direction or another, which makes it more volatile, which for long-term investors doesn't make a good place to play. It makes a good place to stock money away and look for opportunities. Now, if you know what you're doing, you can profit from the volatile movements in the trade, which goes back to what I was talking about in another point, another video where we talked about there's three pieces, I believe, to long-term stock market freedom. Okay, you've got the short-term money. You've got your money that you put into the market, and you put some of it into short-term gains, trades, buying and selling on a regular basis into catalysts like earnings. The second piece is understanding that you can use that to pay off debt, to buy things that you want that you don't have to put on your income, to put on credit cards, and so it makes you more financially stable and gives you more money to buy into the long-term assets that actually build wealth. It's a stock market foundation, and it also allows you to put yourself in a position to where people in your area start to know that you have money. And that benefits you because when people want to start a business, they come to talk to you about investing. And so that kind of thought process is what this is all about. 